Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we've got some rotors here. If you follow along on my channel, you know that we uh, did some work on the military CUCV and uh, put some new rotors on that. Now these rotors are a little too big for my standard rotor uh, uh, on the brake lathe there. Uh, I've got the drum machine, I've got the rotor machine. This one's hard to hold because it's such a big hole right here. Uh, so it's kind of a pain for me to hold this on the uh, on the Amco lathe there. Uh, what we do have this surface right here, your hub bolts to, and this is a this is a true surface. It's machined, and uh, we're just going to take and get some of this rust off because we want this to sit flat. This is just a uh, lathe tool bit right here stuck on a handle. Uh, I, I make these, you just grab a, a, a tool bit, carbide tool bit, stick it on a handle and you got real nice scraper. We just want to get this area nice so it sits perfect and then we can reference off this particular face for the back side of the rotor. We're going to grind these rotors today, we're not going to cut them, we're going to grind them. And, uh, I'll show you how we do that next. But the better we get this surface, the truer our cut is going to be. Not cut, grind. Okay, so I'll fiddle with that a little bit and meet you over at the grinder. Okay, guys, we're over here at the flywheel grinder. We've got our machine surface on that rotor right on the table. Uh, the table is perfectly clean. I clean that surface. Now we know when we grind this surface will be true to the hub surface and that's critical if we want a rotor that's going to not be warped or anything. So uh, from here to here no matter w if that's up or down or wavy it's going to be a true cut. Uh, and that's a good thing about having a machine surface we can true this surface up, then when we flip this and put this trued surface on the table, we can true up the next surface. So we'll have a very nice, um, non-warped, perfectly cut rotor. Uh, I like to use the, uh, the flywheel machine for big rotors like this. Uh, you can do basically anything with this, flywheels, rotors, you know, you just got to get creative how you hold things. But uh, we'll, get, we'll get going, I'll turn it on, we'll get the coolant flowing and uh, you'll probably be able to see I'll probably cut in one or two areas and not cut in other areas you'll, you'll see just exactly how warped this rotor was Okay guys, there it is all cleaned up, and it does leave uh, s some swirls in there, um, like on a flywheel. Now rotors are supposed to have a non-directional finish, and you could take a little 
grinder like this. This has got a Scotch Brite, a brown kind of Scotch Brite pad on it. And um, it, like this is perfectly good. I've done rotors like this before. They're, they're super good and smooth and stop perfect. Um, but I figured I'd just show you the non-directional finish in case you want to do that. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Either way works fine. I'm just going to turn the table on and show you what I mean. Okay guys, you can kind of see a little waviness in there as I was moving, but that's how you get a non-directional finish on these guys. A lot of guys when they do them, little ones on on, uh, on the brake lathes, they do the same thing. But just a little scotch bright wheel uh, will get you a non-directional finish. Okay guys, we've got the rotor flipped over. we got our freshly, perfectly flat surface on the table. Uh, kind of jig this around so it, you know, it's it's concentric and stuff and spins right. Um, now the same thing's going to happen. We'll probably got some some warpage, so we're going to uh, we'll probably hit in a few areas and the uh, same thing. It's just a, just a process. So uh, we'll get the coolant flowing again, we'll get the table spinning, lower the head, and uh, and see what kind of cut we get and where the bad spots are. Okay, we've got two perfectly ground rotors. We know that they're going to be perfect when the hub goes on there because we worked off the machine surface that the hub goes on, trued up the back, then trued up the top. Uh, this particular one uh, rotor thickness now is 1.475. We have a spec that we can't go below of 1.466. This one is 1 inch 471, so we're well within uh, tolerances there. We can use these rotors again. We probably won't be able to cut them again, uh, but we'll have at least one more use out of these. Uh, they were so warped, uh, you know, I had to take so much material off them. Um, but with the coolant, it's nice and cool. We didn't overheat it. Um, this particular one had some hot spots in it because the caliper was sticking. Uh, it's easier to grind through hot spots than it is to cut it on a brake lathe. And uh, I just want to show you guys another way of getting true um, perfect rotors. Uh, you can do them on a the flywheel machine and you can see how they come out. They're perfect. We'll take these and we'll uh, put some preservative on them, put them in a bag, and these will be on the shelf. Uh, in case we need them, you know, again on the uh, on the military pickup, but uh, they'll be in stock, ready to go, and uh, like I say, if I ever need them, they'll be here. I know they're true, and uh, the braking will be perfect with these. So that's all I have for you today. Just a quick one. Just want to show you guys if you uh, if you have big rotors and you can't find anybody to do them, you know, maybe take them over to your uh, engine machine shop and put them on a flywheel grinder, and they will come out absolutely perfect so as always thanks for watching we will catch you on the next one